Hi, my name is Jason Hearn, and today I'd like to show you through some of the finer aspects of Native Instruments' wonderful machine. Machine is the first time I've ever witnessed a manufacturer of a sequencer create a control surface before creating the software application. So in other words, what they've done is they've written the software for machine to exploit the capabilities of the control surface. This is unlike uh, every other sequencer that's preceded it, where the manufacturers created a very um, in-depth, complicated piece of software, and then manufacturers, be it third party or the manufacturer themselves, for years later are looking to create the ideal control surface for that software. Now, where it always falls short is the fact that the control surface has only so many control elements to be able to get to certain aspects of the software. So this means that you still spend a lot of time trying to confirm that your actions you've done on your control surface are actually taking effect on the software. In my opinion, this defeats the purpose of having a control surface if you are still tied to the screen, mouse and keyboard. So the machine encourages the user to be a musician again and get away from the computer and uh, focus purely on the hardware. The machine with its brain and software offers numerous advantages. Workflow advantages which we've enjoyed with software samplers and virtual, virtual instruments for the past you know, 12 or so years. Things like uh, being able to address a large amount of sampling RAM. Uh, machine runs as a 64-bit application. So as soon as you're starting to use computers that are you know, populated with 32 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of RAM, machine will happily exploit those resources. So machine, unlike uh, some of the hardware alternatives it's compared to, it doesn't have its, its brain and its power limited by legacy computer technology. Basically, it will get better every time you upgrade your laptop. So the other aspect as well is that machine will integrate beautifully into a software-based door environment. This is unlike what you'd typically experience when using a hardware-based drum machine. Uh, with a hardware-based drum machine, Generally, there is little to no integration whatsoever with your software sequencer of choice. So everything you do in the machine can be transplanted into a plug-in version of the machine, and you can run multiple instances of that plug-in in your door. This vastly eclipses any kind of integration possibilities you'll find with traditional hardware drum machines. So let's begin by showing you a couple of um, example projects that shows off machine's capabilities. So basically, without touching the screen, mouse and keyboard, I can focus on just the hardware itself to load the project and commence playback. So I just press browse like so. I use this filtering system that NI have devised for navigating through the different parts of the library that it's supplied with. So we start by picking project. We'll pick NI projects. And we'll pick this favorite one of mine called plate tectonics. Let's begin playback. So let's discuss the machine software. We won't be looking at the machine software too much because uh, basically most of the work that you do on the machine is purely focused on the hardware. So we we'll just have a brief tour of the screen here. Um, I'll point now with the mouse and show you the different parts of the screen. So this area up here, this is your arranger. Um, some might consider it to be very similar in, in presentation to what you'd see in Ableton Live Session View. Uh, Ableton Live Session View basically has scenes that go down the page and channels going across the page or tracks. With machine, it's like Ableton's uh, Session View rotated 90 degrees. So basically, scenes run across the screen like so. And then basically down, down uh, vertically, you will see that there's groups. So, on the left hand side we'll see the browser, this is this area here, and this is where all the loading and saving and management of your files takes place. Thankfully you'll see very little of, little need to use that on screen because you can navigate most of the browser functions using the actual machine itself. Okay, in this area here, this is our parameter view, so uh, this is where parameters are shown for various sounds that we pick, and below there that's a pattern editor. And below that, this is the uh, lanes where we, well, this is where we see automation lanes. So machine is capable of doing automation. All of these elements ingeniously can be switched on and off from the control surface itself. So for instance, we can turn the browser on and off like so, the arranger, the parameter view, 
and the modulation view. Uh, okay, so let's have a brief discussion about the layout of the actual machine controller. Along the top here, we have the two displays. Basically, the way that the displays work is that you have soft buttons along the top. The display on the left-hand side controls which context of machine you're looking at. So, for example, master, group, or sound. Now, the elements to the right-hand display are the parameters and properties for that element that you've selected. So, for example, if I press sound, on the right-hand side, we'll see uh, the display showing the parameters relevant for sounds. Likewise, for group and master. So, below the screens, we'll see the eight endless encoders. These feel wonderful to use. They've got a slightly rubberized feel, and they're built to take a hammering, which is a great thing. We have the group select buttons in this area here. These are, are very obvious to use. Pick the group, and that's basically the pads will show what sounds are actually used in that group. This middle strip of buttons here, uh, these are modifier buttons. If, if you use a computer, you'd already be familiar with what a modifier is. So for example, Alt, Shift, Control, those are modifier buttons on the computer keyboard. In the context of machine, these modifiers control what functions the actual pads will have when you press them in tandem with the pads. So for example, if you press and hold Scene, we're now looking at scenes. Pa pattern, we're now selecting and looking at patterns. So on and so forth. Also, uh, below we have the transport, the very important transport. One of the nicest things about using machine, particularly in standalone mode, is that you have full control over its transport without having to reach for your screen, mouse and keyboard. So we have the play button, record, the erase button, this is used in conjunction with the pads to erase parts. Uh, we have the grid button here. Pressing and holding this allows you to select what quantized grid you're going to operate with. And the restart button basically is a way of jumping immediately to the start of bar one, beat one. So let's have a look at um, the hierarchy of machine. So at the top level of machine, we have scenes. Scenes do nothing except for store what patterns are playing back in each group. So basically, if I press and hold the scene button, we can see which scenes are active for this project. So if all of them are lit like this, it means that our machine will cycle from this first scene through the end scene and repeat that process. Uh, if we select a single scene, then machine will cycle over that one scene over and over. Now, scenes themselves actually do not store anything except for just which pattern is playing in each group. So it's important that we probably look at the groups now. So the groups are accessed here. You've got groups A through H, so eight groups. Uh, each group has its own set of patterns. So uh, basically you can select the pattern for each group by pressing and holding the pattern button and then just simply tapping which pattern you'd like to use. Now, you aren't limited to just 16 patterns per group. There's actually A, group A, B, C, and D. So effectively you have 64 patterns per group that are unique to each group. So basically, groups are the container for sounds. So each group has its own unique set of 16 sounds. Uh, a sound can be anything from a third-party VST instrument through to a sampler module, which is one of machine's own internal modules, or uh, it can even be an input. So pads can actually be used as a means to steer audio streams around within the side of machine. Uh, this offers some really unique uh, signal processing possibilities when you combine that with effects. So, the pads are very sensitive. They can take the strongest touch or the lightest touch. And they're sensitive on all parts of the pad. Something else that's little known about machine is that the pads are not just velocity sensitive, they're actually aftertouch sensitive. Now this opens some unique performance possibilities, uh, in particular when you combine this with the note repeat function. So you'll see there's a button called note repeat on your machine controller. I'm going to press this down. I'm going to pick 16th, so I'll be repeating notes at 16th intervals. And now, so basically the, the pads are, will detect how hard they're being pressed down after you've struck them. It's a very, very uh, useful aspect of machine, and if you indeed employ machine to be a controller for other elements in your studio, you can take advantage of the aftertouch. Uh, transmission functions.